Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to extract an OLE image out of an OLE object field in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from David in Queensland, Australia, one of my silver members. David says, I've been following your YouTube tutorials and learned that storing images directly in a database isn't efficient. That is correct. As a coin collector, I've accumulated over 2,000 images in my database. I try to extract these images into JPEG or BMP formats using a VBA script. However, I can't view the images produced by the script. They appear to be the correct size, but the format isn't supported when I attempt to open them. Could you advise on how to fix this issue to avoid manually saving each image? Well, David, I will say that I've played with this issue on and off for years now, and I've, I've spent hours Googling it and trying different VBA programs I found online. There are a bunch of different pieces of VBA code that you could try in your database, and they will extract something. They'll create a file, um, but when you try to open that file, you get the images and support it with whatever you try to use to open it. And the reason why I believe this happens is because when Access stores something, whether it's an image or a file, in an OLE object, it packages it, it bundles it. It puts a header and possibly a footer on it. And um, unless you know how to strip that off to get to the raw image data, uh, which I've tried doing and I, I, I can't seem to do it, um, then the file that you create is not going to be in the right format. Now, if any of you out there have a solution that's straight VB code, let me know because I've been looking for it for a while myself. But what I am going to show you today is a technique that will work. And it's, it's a good enough solution to where if you've built your database already and you've been, you know, you, let's say you inherited it from someone else or you started it years ago and you didn't know any different uh, and you've got a bunch of images in your OLE objects in your database and you want to pull them out, this is good enough to do like a one-time job to fix it, okay? I wouldn't recommend using this as a, on a continuing basis, but at least this will help you get your images out of your database without having to do them all manually. So here's the solution that I've come up with, and it works. I'm not 100% proud of it because, as you can see, we're going to be using send keys. I usually try to avoid send keys. Now, I got a whole separate video on send keys. It does have its uses. I just realized my logo was out of center. It does have its uses, and this is one of them. When you can't get something to work perfectly with VB code, it's, it's a cheesy solution, folks, but I've tested it a couple times, and it works, and I've used this technique before in the past. So if you've got a database and you just want to pull all the images out of it and create files out of them, this will work for you, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Before we get started, though, this is a developer-level video. What does that mean? Well, that means if you don't know anything about VBA, go watch this video first. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Also, go watch my send keys video to learn more about send keys. As you can see there, it's the good enough sometimes function. <laughs> it's, I try not to use it, but sometimes you're left with no other choice. We're also going to use the sleep function because oftentimes with send keys, you have to put a little delay in there because you can't just <clears throat> send a whole bunch of keys at once. You got to send a key, wait a second, like when you're waiting for paint to load, and then continue on with the code. So go watch the sleep function video. And go watch my delete files video too. We're going to try deleting the file before we try saving it, because if you go to save it and it's already there, paint's going to go, hey, this file's already there, you want to save what? And it'll mess everything up. So just we'll, we'll delete it first, then we'll save it, just in case. So go watch this video too. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. I'll put the links down below in the description. Go watch them, and then come on back. All right, here's my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. I'm going to make a folder on my desktop to put this stuff in because I'm going to put all the images in the same folder. So I'm just going to call it new database or whatever you want to call it. All right, we'll put our database file in there. You don't have to. This is just what I'm doing. All right, open her up, and let's start up the database. Okay, now the first thing we need is to make an OLE object field, which I normally recommend against these. But I do run into a lot of students who were using them. Because that's how, this is how we used to have to do it in the old days, right? Uh, and I'm guilty of it, too. I used to use these back in the day because there was no better solution. But now we know better. And if you, if you aren't familiar with the new way to do it, 
then go watch my images video. Basically, you don't want to store images in your database because it's extremely inefficient. And if you got big images and lots of them, your database will fill up in no time. So in this video, I show you how to store the, the path and file name of the image in the table. And then you store the actual file in a folder, which is how you should do it. Okay. All right. So go watch this if you want to learn more about that. But for the sake of class, let's go into our customer table. And I'm going to add a field down here. We'll call it profile picture. And that'll be an OLE object. Object linking and embedding is what it stands for. And it was a good idea back in its day where, you know, you could take any kind of image like a PDF file or a Word document or a spreadsheet and you could paste it into there and it would save it. But it's, it's just not efficient. It's not a good idea to, to use them. All right. Save your table. Close it. And let's throw that on our customer form. And I am just going to delete all of this stuff because we don't really need it for now. Goodbye. And I'm going to save one of these buttons because I'm going to repurpose it in a second. But right here, let's put our OLE object. Okay, so go to form design, go to add existing fields, find your profile picture, click, drag, drop. There it is right there. I'm going to delete that little text box that comes with it. We can now close the field list and let's make this a decent size for a profile picture like that. Okay. All right, we're looking good so far. Save it, close it, open it. Now, there's lots of different ways you can put stuff in here. You can right click and you can insert object. But generally, if you can see the picture here, the best way to get it in there is to copy and paste it. In fact, let me just show you. If you do go to insert object, if this is the way you've got your stuff stored. If you go create from file and let's browse for a file. All right, let's say I picked this one here, Picard and Riker. All right, and I insert it. Okay, if you see your pictures like that, then this technique that I'm going to show you isn't going to work. Only if you can actually see the picture in there will this work. And that's usually resolved to just bitmaps. All right, I'm going to hit escape. If you try to add a bitmap that way, you'll actually see the picture here. Or if you copy and paste the image, then you'll see it here as well. All right, if I open up Spock here, for example. All right, here's Mr. Spock. It's an animated GIF, but I'm going to take a screenshot of it using my screen capture tool. And I'll just grab it like this. And then I'll switch over to my database, click on that field, paste it in there, and there you go. That's traditionally the way that you store images in your OLE objects, right? Go to another one. Let's grab Kirk. Here's a copy of Kirk right there. Open that up. Handsome W. I just watched him last night on, I think it was Bill Maher. And he's 93 years old and he still looks fantastic. All right, one more. And he still talks like he's like, you know, in his 60s. He's a young chicken. I don't think I have a picture of Troy. Let's skip. Let's do I'm going to do a couple more so we have them in here. Jean-Luc. Let's find Jean-Luc. There he is right there. Open him up. And you can see how it, it nicely stretches him because these are all different sizes. All right. We'll do one more. Who else we got here? Riker. I got Riker. We'll do the Picard Riker one. Where is that? All right. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> okay. Come here. I'll just grab Riker like that. Just so we got Riker in there. So, all right, perfect. So we got four pictures in here. We'll pretend it's 4,000, right? And I want to be able to extract them. We're just doing one at a time for now, which by the way, I apologize. I usually assume people that are working with Microsoft Access know the Windows basics. So if you don't know how to take a screenshot, you can use the Windows Snip and Sketch tool, with com which comes with Windows. I'm using HyperSnap myself. I've been using it since I think the 90s. So that's a it's my favorite tool, but Snip and Sketch works almost the same way. All right, so now we got this image here. Let's make this button so we can save this to our hard drive. And we will cover that tomorrow in part two. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record it in just a few minutes. So either sign up and be a member and you can watch it right now or come on back tomorrow for part two. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. 
There's a little show more down there right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. 
You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.